Hello students, welcome back to our lecture series on environmental modeling and simulation. In this lecture, we will continue our conversation on logistic growth model. So as a recap, if you remember, in the previous lecture, we managed to create a phase portrait for the logistic growth model. On x-axis, we have the number of bacteria or whatever is growing following a logistic growth model. And on y-axis, we have the rate at which n is changing. And the geometric graph, the phase portrait we drew looked something like this with first fixed point being at 0 and the second fixed point being at k. Now the k here is a very important figure and today we are going to figure out what is the importance of k. If you have studied logistic growth model before, you already know where I am going with this. But we are going to use a very different approach, not the typical quantitative analytical approach, but a geometric qualitative approach. We also understood in the previous uh, lecture that among these two fixed points, so let me write here that these are, we have two fixed points here. Among these two fixed points, both of them are not similar, they are quite different from each other. We learned that if there is a minor perturbation around the fixed point 0, the number n moves away from 0, either towards minus infinity or in the direction of positive infinity. And we classified 0 as an unstable fixed point. On the other hand, the fixed point k is a stable fixed point because if we have a minor perturbation around the fixed point k, the number n, uh, the number of bacteria or whatever we are counting tends to return back to k. So, the geometric approach, uh, in the geometric approach, we graphically represent the stability of the fixed point by using a very simple notation. And that is the notation I want to introduce to you right now. So, for an unstable fixed point, the typical notation is to draw a circle around the fixed point and leave it open. It is an open circle. This is an unstable fixed point. Around the stable fixed point, we will draw a circle and then we will close it, we will color it inside. So a filled circle is drawn around stable fixed points. The other thing that I want you to remember from the previous lecture is how to graphically determine the stability of fixed point. Remember whenever dn by dt or your rate at which things are changing are negative, the flow is towards minus infinity. Whenever dn by dt in this case is positive, the flow is towards positive infinity. So by looking at the direction of arrows, we get an idea of how the perturbation will move around fixed points. In the fixed point n equal to 0, notice the arrows are moving away from the fixed point. So we know that the movement will happen away from the fixed point and hence it is a it is an unstable fixed point. Another name for unstable fixed points is repeller for obvious reasons. On the other hand, the direction of arrows are towards the fixed point n is equal to k. So it is also known as an attractor. That is another name for stable fixed points. Now that we know once again how to determine the stability of fixed points, they are also known as repeller and attractor. Let us use this graph to understand how n will change with time in case of logistic growth model. So we are going to draw another graph, time on x-axis, n on y-axis. So since we are dealing with um, bacteria, number of bacteria because we are still talking about bacterial growth. And this model may also work for other simple unicellular organisms such as yeast but it works, tends to work pretty well for bacteria. So n cannot be negative because bacteria is an alive being and we cannot have negative numbers of natural things, natural numbers start from positive end. So let us say we are completely going to disregard anything on the left side of y axis because n is going to be positive. Now let us start from here. Let us say our n naught is very close to the first fixed point 0. We are starting somewhere here, n naught is here. So notice here at n naught, n is equal to n naught, dn by dt is positive, which means with time n will increase. So the direction at which n will move will point upward. The slope of the line here, the tangent to the curve is positive. By the time n increases and reaches another value nt1, 
let us say n t 1 is here. Notice that d n by d t is now much bigger than it was when n was equal to n naught. So, basically as n is increasing the rate at which n is increasing increases it is accelerating. So, the slope here would be more steep than it was at this time t 1 and this continues until the n reaches a point where d n by d t is maximum which is the top of this curve. Now, qualitative approach cannot tell you when the top of this curve would be reached. Uh, you need quantitative approach for that at what value of n will d n by d t be maximum, at what time d n by d t will be maximum, but sometimes qualitative approach can give us sufficient answers to understand the behavior of the system. So, right now we are going to stick with qualitative approach and very soon I will also introduce you to quantitative tools, some of which you are probably already familiar with. Okay. So, until we reach the value of n at which d n by d t is maximum, the acceleration continues. So, what we are seeing is actually very similar to exponential growth. Now, what happens when n moves, uh, uh, n increases beyond this particular point where d n by d t is maximum? So, let us say n reaches here, yeah. So, at this particular n, now the acceleration has stopped, d n by d t is still positive. So, it, the n will still increase, but the rate at which it is increasing will slow down. So, instead of acceleration, we, we are entering the phase of deceleration. So, what happens is it is still increasing, but the slope here, the tangent here would have a slope that is less than the slope of the tangent before it. And as it n keeps on increasing, it is still increasing because d n by d t is still positive, d n by d t becomes smaller and smaller. It is still positive, but it is becoming smaller and smaller. So, basically the curve starts flattening out. What happens when n approaches k d n by d t is still positive, but it is very small. So, as n approaches k, d n by d t starts flattening out. If you remember your basic mathematics, when time is equal to infinity, n will be equal to k because as it approaches k, it is slowing down even further as is visible from this graph. So, you see when we start from a sufficiently small number, it first undergoes exponential growth sort of linear around when d n by d t is maximum which is here and then as it approaches k, it is the n value starts stabilizing. <clears throat> now, let us choose another color to start with an another initial point. So, now instead of starting very close to the point 0, which is the first fixed point, let us start from a point that is still less than k, but very close to k. So, let us say we are starting here n naught. We are starting here at n naught and it is very close to k. Now, let us take a look at it. d n by d t is positive. So, we are starting here. This is our second n naught. Let us call it n naught 2. Now, n naught 2 is very close to k, <coughs> it is still going to increase because d n by d t is positive. What happens when n increases from n naught 2 slightly towards k? So, let us increase slightly. Now, as n moves towards the right side, which is it is increasing in our phase portrait, d n by d t becomes smaller. You notice d n by d t is going down, which means the rate at which n is changing is decreasing. Yeah, it is still positive, so it is still increasing, but it is decelerating. So, instead of increasing exponentially, the slope of the tangent will start flattening out. So, it will never ever undergo the exponential growth, it is already resembling the later part of growth that we saw here. So, this is the kind of curve to expect. This is when n naught is less than k, but it is quite close to k. Now, let us take another example and I will use a different color for this. An example where the initial number of bacteria we are starting with is larger than the second fixed point. We are starting from here, this is our n naught. The initial value is larger than the second fixed point. So, we are starting from here, n naught. Let us see what happens. So, if you look at n naught, when n is equal to n naught, d n by d t curve is below the x axis, it is negative. So, instead of a bacterial growth, we are going to see a bacterial decay. So, instead of moving upward, 
n versus t diagram will slope downward in a negative uh, with negative slope. So, what we are going to see is that it will move down. Now, as n a decreases, the movement of n in this phase portrait will be towards left side, towards minus infinity because n is reducing. So, n is moving towards left hand side. Now, as n moves towards left hand side, it is getting closer to the second fixed point k. Also, dn by dt, the magnitude of dn by dt is reducing, which means it is still going to slow down, it still has negative velocity, which means it is the value of n is still going to move towards left side, is still going to decrease, but the rate at which it is decreasing is going to slow down. So, it is still going to point down, but the slope of the tangent of this curve will start flattening out. So, what we will see is something like this. As it approaches k, the slope starts flattening out. So, even without having any quantitative information on the logistic growth model, we can still sort of predict how the bacteria will grow. If our starting initial number is low, we can expect initially we can expect it expect exponential growth, some sort of a linear phase and then a flattening out of the curve. This is also known as sigmoid growth because see it makes us S like structure. However, if you start very close to carrying capacity, we only expect that the growth will slowly move towards the carrying capacity. If we start more than carrying capacity, we are going to see a net decrease in the bacterial number and it will approach the K. I have been using the word carrying capacity, the phrase carrying capacity without actually introducing you to it. So, I will take this opportunity to now introduce you to carrying capacity. Notice no matter where we are starting from n greater than 0 to n which is much larger than k, all the trajectories, these dark blue, light sky blue and purple lines are trajectories, all the trajectories are eventually ending up at the value k. So, no matter where we start, the final at sufficiently large time, the number of bacteria will be equal to k. So, what the scientists understood when they looked at these plots, when they looked at this behavior of bacteria, it seems that bacterial number sort of stabilizes at a fixed amount and that amount is constant for a given environment under given resources. If I increase the resources, the k increases, if I decrease the resources, k goes down. So, they started calling this limitation, this very important number as a carrying capacity of the environment and your environment might be an ecosystem or a petri dish. Okay, so, this was logistic growth model and for revision the very important terms that we learned here were fixed point, repeller, attractor. We also learned that this line and in this case it is a one dimensional line which shows, which tells the person, tells the scientist or the engineer everything they need to know about the system at any given time. In this case just the x axis is sufficient is known as trajectory. It includes phase points which inform me about the behavior or all the things I need to know about the system to understand the system at any given time. This particular diagram on left hand side is known as face portrait. This is not something that people are very used to. People are more used to these kind of diagrams where you have the dependent variable plotted against the independent variable. Now, I am going to take another example just to make you more familiar with how this process works. So far, we looked at exponential and logistic growth model, which most of you probably are already familiar with as these are typically taught in undergrad or even before during the school. But now, we are going to take some very simple models that you are aware of, but instead of using the quantitative approach, we are going to look at them using qualitative approach. So, let us write, I will, uh, the first example I want to take is this one. The function fx is giving you dx by dt. So, rate at which the value x is changing and let us use a very simple cubic function plus x to power 3. So, if we look at this function x to power 3, there you have the traditional approach where you can plot x versus time and see how x is changing or you can integrate this and then plot x versus time. In qualitative approach, we are going to plot, this is a one dimensional system, so we are going to plot a phase portrait. So, if you remember step 1 of the phase portrait is to find out the fixed point. So, step 1, find the fixed points. Remember fixed points are the points of equilibrium. 
these are the points where your system seems to have stopped dx by dt in this case will become 0. So, to find the fixed point let us make dx by dt equal to 0 which means x cube is equal to 0. Now, for what values of x will x cube be equal to 0? There is only one answer which is x equal to 0 and we know now we can plot this very easily the face portrait on y axis we will plot dx by dt no need to integrate we are not using analytical approach yet on x axis we will plot the variable x. Now, when x is positive well we know that at x equal to 0 dx by dt is 0. So, this is definitely a fixed point we do not know what kind of fixed point it is, but we do know that when x is positive dx by dt increases quite rapidly and it continues to increase and when x is negative dx by dt the magnitude increases in the negative direction. So, the overall dx by dt decreases quite rapidly. So, this is your phase portrait. Now, how do we interpret the phase portrait? First thing we have done is found the fixed point. The second thing we need to do which is step 2 is identify the stability of the fixed point. Now, ideally I want my students to understand how we identify the stability of fixed point which is by generating small perturbations towards the left and right of the fixed point. So, if you perturb if you if you start at x equal to 0 which is a fixed point here and you have a perturbation towards the left side which is x, we are going from 0 to 0 minus epsilon dx by dt is negative. So, you reach here minus epsilon dx by dt is negative. So, you will rapidly start moving towards minus infinity. So, you're moving away. So, clear signs of unstability on the left side of the fixed point. Now, on the right side of the fixed point, if I do a perturbation and reach to plus epsilon, notice dx by dt is positive. So, the movement will be towards right hand side towards positive infinity. Look at the direction of the arrows. The flow in this phase portrait is away from the fixed point. Thus, this fixed point is an unstable fixed point. And you can demarcate it very clearly in your answers by drawing an open circle over it also known as a repeller. It is a repeller, it is an unstable fixed point. Sometimes I ask students all right if I am starting at this fixed point it is an unstable fixed point what will be the qualitative behavior of the system and students often say oh it will go to minus infinity, it will go to plus infinity because it is an unstable fixed point you cannot stay there. Theoretically if you are starting at fixed point you always stay at fixed point because at fixed point the rate of change is 0. So, this is an unstable fixed point the shortcut the shorter way of figuring it out without creating any perturbation because that is time consuming is to just look at the sign of y axis. On left side of the fixed point dx by dt curve is below the axis. So, it is negative negative means we move towards the left side. On right side of the fixed point dx by dt is positive. So, positive means we move towards the right side towards positive infinity. So, instead of creating perturbation and then figuring out the movement just look at where the curve is below the x axis where it is above the axis draw the arrows and then figure out how the arrows are behaving. So, here we have clearly demarcated that this is an unstable fixed point. Now, step 3 is where the fun begins. Now, step 3 is to figure out how your x versus time diagram will look qualitatively. So, we do not know exactly at what time how the behavior will be, but it should be possible for us to draw an x versus time diagram for different starting values of x. For example, if we are starting at 0, we always will remain at 0, it is an unstable fixed point, but it is a fixed point. So, we always stay here. If you are starting at a positive number, so we are starting at a positive x naught dx by dt is positive. So, x will increase and as x increases dx by dt will rapidly increase. So, we are going to see a very rapid increase. If you are starting from a negative value. So, let us say we are starting here x naught is here. So, this is x naught 1 and this is x naught 2. What is happening here dx by dt is negative. So, the slope will move towards downside and as x reduces the magnitude of dx by dt increases which means the decrease in x will be very rapid. So, we are going to see a rapid decrease. So, this is how your x versus t diagram will look in a system that is governed by this equation. 
this is the information you can get just by qualitative approach. Now, let us take another example. Let us say dx by dt is equal to sin x. This is a fun one and I hope uh, you will be able to use the principles we just discussed to understand how this function will behave. Now, a very simple solution for you might be to integrate it, but that is not what we are doing. And the reason why I do not want to encourage you to use the analytical approach at this stage is to make you more familiar with the geometric approach. So, when we are dealing with nonlinear systems that uh, where we use ordinary differential equations in a nonlinear way and that cannot be solved analytically easily, you should be able to use graphical approach because you are very familiar with it. All right. Remember, step one is to find the fixed points. Okay. So, to find the fixed point, we want to find out all the values of x at which dx by dt becomes 0, which means sin x becomes 0. When does sin x become 0? So, if you look at the graph of sin x, in either direction, all the zeros are multiple multiples of pi. So, if for this to happen x is equal to n pi where n is any number any integer. So, n can be 0 also n can be minus 1 minus 2 plus 1 plus 2 anything that is when this is 0. So, now we are going to do the step 2 which is make the face portrait. Why do we need to make face portrait to figure out the stability of the fixed point. So, I have already made the face portrait, but it is very important to label the axes. So, on x axis we have x, on y axis we have dx by dt. Cool. Now, we are going to do stability analysis for the fixed points. Now, notice that this goes on forever. Yeah. So, if I ask you how many fixed points does this system have? The answer is infinite because depending upon if your range of x is from minus infinity to plus infinity, you do have infinite fixed points. But if you have a limited range that hey x only moves from this particular level to that particular level, you may be able to count the fixed points. Okay. So, how do you figure out the stability of the fixed point? Let us use the simple technique that I discussed in the previous example. Just look at the intervals between the fixed points and between minus infinity and the first fixed point and the last fixed point and the plus infinity which is not going to be the case here and look at the sign of dx by dt there. So, here on the left side here because again it is going to cross notice that dx by dt is positive which means the flow is towards right side. Why is that the case? Take a moment to think about it and if you need pause the video. I hope you figured out that the reason the flow will be towards right side is because dx by dt is positive which means the value of x is increasing it is moving towards plus infinity. Here between these two fixed points dx by dt is negative which means x is reducing which means the flow is towards left side it is towards minus infinity. Again between these two fixed points that I just marked the dx by dt is positive so the flow is towards right side and we continue this. Once you have marked your system with arrows all you need to do is look at how the arrows are behaving around the fixed point. So, if we start with this fixed point let us call it fixed point A, the arrows are pointing towards the fixed point. So, this is a stable fixed point, it is an attractor. So, what we can do is draw a circle and close the circle. Now, let us look at the second fixed point, let us call it B. The arrows are moving away from the fixed point, so it is an unstable fixed point, it is a repeller. So, what you can do is draw a circle around it and leave the circle open and we can continue similar analyses for other fixed points. This one is going to be a stable fixed point because the arrows are pointing towards it, 0 is an unstable fixed point. The next fixed point is a stable fixed point because the arrows are pointing towards it 
And then here the arrows are moving away from the fixed point. So this is going to be an unstable, stable and then an unstable. Notice another thing. In this case, the stable and unstable fixed points are alternating. And this happens when your trajectory, your curve moves up and down the x axis. So in this particular case, since the curve sin x is moving below the x axis and then rising up and then move up below the x axis, we can even without drawing all the arrows, we can understand that the fixed points will alternate. However, this will not be the case if we have a curve, a face portrait that looks something like this. So you see there are two fixed points here, yeah, and we will let, just looking at the plot, let at this face portrait, let us try to understand the stability of the fixed point. So notice here, we will start from the left side, dx by dt is positive to the left side of this fixed point, so the direction is towards right side. Now to the right side of this fixed point, the first fixed point, let us call it A, on the right side also dx by dt is positive, so the flow is again towards right. On the right side of the second fixed point, let us call it the fixed point B, the dx by dt is negative, it is below x axis, so the flow is towards left. So while the second fixed point, the fixed point B is clearly a stable fixed point, the same cannot be said for the first fixed point A, because on left side it is stable, but on right side it remains unstable. So this is a special case where we have half stable and half unstable fixed points. If your plot is not, I call it bouncing off, if your trajectories are not bouncing off the axis, if your plot is not bouncing off the x axis in any direction, you can be pretty sure that your fixed points will alternate in stability like they do for x equal to sin x, dx by dt is equal to sin x. But if they are bouncing off, then you are going to enter the realm of half stable and half unstable. Now what we are going to do in the next lecture is use the information here, this phase portrait to draw the x versus time diagram for a system that follows this motion. Now if you remember a very simple um, model that you all studied way before you entered college actually tends to follow a similar motion. It is a simple harmonic oscillator, it is a simple pendulum. And in the introduction, I did share how this very simple motion can be very difficult to analyze analytically, to understand, but with graphical approach, it becomes easier. So what I want to do, and before you move to the next lecture, what I want you to think about is how you're going to use the information in the face portrait that we just made to plot x versus time diagram for a system that follows dx by dt is equal to sin x. That's all for this lecture. See you in the next. Thank you.